Hi guys, um, what did I want to talk to you about today? Mm. Um, not what I'm actually going to talk to you about. Yes, I've decided against it because I was going to have a little bit of a rant. Yes, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd leave that alone. So what I'm going to talk to you today about um, is birds in flight. Yes, birds in flight, rather like this. And why I use manual exposure with auto ISO and if I come back out to um, a grid view and we can see we've got a sequence of 46 images here all consecutive all shot in one burst uh, Canon 1DX Mark II and Canon 200 400 at uh, 294 mil and if we go to the first frame and we check out the time um, it's not adjusted for Norway um, but this is 6.55 and 23 and the last one here is 6.55 and 27 so this entire sequence took place in four seconds yeah so it's going a pace yes <laughs> and I've pulled up the Lightroom um, metadata filter bar so we can see the ISO speeds that have been used automatically by the camera uh, throughout this sequence of 46 images and we can see we've got eight various ISO speeds uh, 400 ISO up to 2500 ISO and that's the camera using ISO as the semi-automatic adjustment um, whereas you might be used to using shutter priority or uh, semi-auto or aperture priority semi-auto if you put the camera in manual and not all cameras will do this uh, the majority of Nikons will but there's only a, as far as I know there's only the 1DX, 1DX Mark II and 5D Mark IV that will actually do it on Canon but they have brought out other cameras since uh, the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II so maybe I'm talking out my backside and maybe some of the newer cam Canon cameras do do uh, have they got any newer ones? I don't know but anyway, it's beside the point so I'm shooting manual exposure where I set the shutter speed which as you can see here is a permanent constant 2500th of a second throughout this entire sequence and an aperture of f6.3 now sometimes I'll sh I'll set that aperture at f7 or f7.1 or whatever it works out at or some other times I will actually set it at f8 it depends a how much light I've got and b what it is I'm trying to do and how much uh, shutter speed I actually think I'll need as a maximum um, but anybody who tells you they do this sort of thing uh, birds in flight at a 500th of a second and they get pin sharp photographs is lying lying because they don't uh, they might look pin sharp as a little jpeg on some poxy bloody photography forum um, but viewed at full res they're not sharp they will be riddled with motion blur because birdies fly quite fast right anyway that's that little rant over so if I use the camera in um, a single set ISO speed then we've got a variation in ISO here of 2500 to 400 which say it's two and a third stops of um, exposure variation between um, this the, well, 46 images in this sequence and um, so basically if it was using the I as a set ISO then the camera will be varying either the aperture by two and a third stops or it will be varying the shutter speed by two and a third stops neither of which do I want to do because it would either be turning the aperture down and going to f8, f9, f10, f11 or it would be turning the shutter speed down yeah and going slower than a two and a half thousandth of a second and I don't want that to happen 
because I will get motion blur. And the reason I don't want to ever on big lenses such as a Canon 200-400 and Nikon 200-400 um, or a 500mm f4, the reason I never really want to use those at an aperture narrower than f8 is they don't look very good. No. All those lenses are designed to be used relatively wide open. They give their best performance relatively wide open. So, let's go through these shots. And we'll start out at this first one. And let's take it up to a 100% uh, a view. And none of these images have had anything done to them. Uh, they're not cropped, they're not straightened. And uh, they're all raw files. And all they've done is had a process version swap put on them just to get the contrast hmm. relatively under control so as we can see here um, video compression might not allow you to see this but this is nearly sharp nearly well this is the first image in the sequence I've been tracking this bird for probably a second two seconds before I've taken this first shot but this is the first shot in the sequence so as we step through these quite quickly um, you can still see he's not perfectly sharp and uh, just wait for this to load up um, that's sharper that's acceptably sharp so stepping through still acceptably sharp pull it down wait for it to load up I um, don't see why it's um, working quite so slowly because I've already built the one to one previews for the library module but well there you go uh, that's Lightroom for you um, so yes um, relatively sharp again relatively sharp again wait for it to load up and that's acceptably sharp so we're stepping all the way through here so basically all these images are acceptably sharp to very sharp now the only thing is that hmm I did a couple of videos about Canon partial metering um, a little while ago, um, sort of around Christmas time, and I, I hope, can you hear the police sirens in the back? Yeah, somebody's in trouble, it's not me. Uh, <laughs> how that is, I have no idea. But um, if I was actually wanting um, first rate exposures, on the bird while it's against the sky sometimes I might use partial metering sometimes I might use evaluative it all depends on where the light is um, relative to me and the subject but what I'm concerned with here is not the bird in the sky it's a, the bird against the water and so I track the bird and I'll take photographs of the bird while it's in the sky but I'm actually after the what you might call the money shot which is the bird against the water so anyway let's just step through these and you can see this exposure's got quite dark um, in comparison to um, say this one which was two frames before and if you look where the tonality is it's um, it's towards the right hand third of the sort of mid-tone range but as we start to step forward um, it's getting a little bit darker and a little bit darker still and a little bit darker still and that's basically um, the ISO calculation for the camera is just, just a little bit off but now you'll notice when we step over to the next one where I've now got a subject which is fundamentally lighter than its background the camera now st starts to turn the exposure up now of course it can't turn the exposure up using shutter speed or aperture because i've already set that because we're in manual mode so what it's doing it's using the auto iso function to actually jack the exposure and so you can also see that in all these all these shots this entire sequence i've actually got one third of a stop positive exposure compensation dialed in because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expose to the right now we can't clinically expose to the right as we can with a landscape and using a handheld one degree spot meter 
because we're just not in that sort of scenario. This is high speed sports action wildlife, uh, not sport, this is wildlife, but it all amounts to the same thing, the same sort of technique. Long lens, high speed sports action wildlife. And you have to modify your techniques according to the, um, the style of photography that you're doing. So ooh, we've got a light subject against a dark background. The, obviously the bird hasn't got any lighter. If we step back, um, it's still the same color and it reflects the same amount of light, but the sky is lighter. Therefore partial metering would have done a better job of this sort of shot, but this isn't the shot that I'm after. The shots that I'm after come here, yeah? And so as I step through these images, and um, you can see the bird is getting very, very light against the uh, dark background, but you'll notice how good the exposure is on this actual dark background. And you'll notice up here in the histogram, I'm getting no clipping showing. Well, we won't do because I'm actually in the uh, library module. But you can see I've got no clipping showing on the uh, histogram. And this bird, which is obviously the important thing in the shot because it's your subject, is looking very, very bright. People would say this bird is overexposed, but it isn't. Not by a long shot, as you can sort of tell by the histogram, bearing in mind that this is a Lightroom histogram, not the histogram of the raw file. So as we step through, I need to stick back into, uh, slip back over into the library module so you can see the ISO. And you'll now notice that the ISO has been jacked up by the camera to 2000 ISO. And you're going to be sitting there thinking, wow, these are going to be really noisy. Uh, but they're not. So we'll step through here and it's still staying at 2000 ISO. Is the autofocus keeping up? Let's just wait for it to load. Because we're in the develop module yes that looks nice and sharp that's all looking great and what I'm looking for is the 2500 ISO shot and uh, we'll keep going we'll keep stepping through and uh, these are all still sharp uh, forgive the wonky horizon but this is what happens when you're in a boat with hmm, what 12 14 inches of freeboard in a sea that's got waves on it yes it sort of goes up and down and rolls around from side to side and so it is really difficult to well it's sometimes it's near impossible to actually keep your subject central in your viewfinder so sometimes it does come out of your autofocus uh, point pattern and uh, you have to trust that the camera has actually worked out what's going on with the predictive autofocus so and if you want to know how your autofocus system works i'll put a link down in the description below and i'll try and put one up at the top as well for my um autofocus guide which you can go and download from my digital download store but anyway there you go shameless plug do i care no um sold hundreds and hundreds of them so uh, it's worth buying yeah yes it is anyway let's carry on and um, here we go is the 2500 iso shot and have we got any more at 2500 that's at 2000 so you can see i mean this camera is batting along at 12 frames a second yeah and it's managed to from that frame at 2000 iso it's now changed it to 2500 in the next frame and then back to 2000 ISO the frame after that and 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, yes, 1600, yeah. So you can see it, it, it does usually adjust itself very quick and you do have the, well the camera gives you the ability when you use manual with auto ISO. Well, it, the way it operates it can change iso between one frame and the next frame even when it's running at 12 frames a second but all i'm going to do is uh, step back to this 2500 iso shot when i can find it there it is 2500 iso and you can see that the even with the histogram in lightroom you can see how far 
over to the right it's exposed and if we take it up to a fit to screen view uh, well not fit to screen view 100% view is it sharp yes it is does it look very noisy no it doesn't and it will look even less noisy in a minute because all I need to do is go over into the basics panel and just maybe now whoo, when you when I do processing videos I tell you that recovery doesn't work and you can't recover highlights that are blown you just can't because there's nothing there but what you can do in Lightroom is actually turn the highlights down it's not as precise as um, a lot of people seem to think it is but it can help because if I just turn those highlights down just a smidge and then I turn the exposure down a little bit now you can see that I've got my full range of whites in the tail and everything else in the bird is well under control and if we come out to effect the screen view yes he's looking all right yes he's got the wonky horizon because the boat's pitching and rolling but at the end of the day the image is perfect to be worked on in either Lightroom or Photoshop in other words we haven't got any blown highlights but we've been running in auto ISO on a manual exposure and we've even had one third of a stop EV uh, positive exposure compensation dialed in so of course all we need to do is just basically crop this image now and we'll just go and rotate it till it's relatively level um, scoot him over there do we actually want to do anything else to it well for the sake of argument no yes he's a bit low in the frame but you will also notice that on the wing uh, primaries here they are full of motion blur so even a 2500th of a second wasn't fast enough to actually freeze the motion of these primaries because you have to remember you know, a bird is a living animal and you know some well, it, while, while it's moving some bits of it are moving faster than the other bits which is something a lot of people fail to consider or take into account so <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I did a video not so long ago on why I don't use spot metering uh, for birds in flight now I'm telling you or showing you a video why I don't use shutter priority or aperture priority for for birds in flight but I still want to maintain or hand over a certain amount of exposure control to the camera because this is a sequence of 46 images that take place in four seconds and while I am in the process of holding that shutter button down I can't change anything can I no so I have to make the camera or constrain the camera but with that sort of um, one third uh, positive exposure comp I have to constrain it a little bit as to what it counts as a base exposure and then allow it to use the because we're in, in Canon's um, evaluative meter in here uh, what Lightroom calls pattern and using that metering system in conjunction with auto ISO and that one third exposure positive exposure compensation the camera's doing a really good job and being able to expose my highlights as far to the right as possible uh, without blowing them so there we go we're using manual auto ISO a little bit of exposure compensation to keep our exposures relatively exposed to the right so you know I mean where's the noise in this image there isn't any there isn't any um if i go over to this image here which is if i just go command i to pull up the information oh that's not worked <laughs> oh it has yes so this is still 2500th of a second f6.3 iso 2000 and you can tell even in its neutral state uh, there is no noise and this sort of harks back to the video I did last week on ISO invariance and when you allow the camera to make its exposures based on what it can see even at high ISOs 
if you've got enough light on the subject, you ain't going to see much in the way of noise. Whereas if you underexpose the image and then turn it up, then you will see way more noise and you will not be getting an accurate exposure or you will not be making the best exposure that you possibly could for the circumstances that were in front of you. And again, with this image, all I'm going to do is just knock the exposure down a little bit. That's maybe too much. I'll go, um, what, uh, minus 0.7, yeah, and we'll knock it down there, and then we'll just come and turn the highlights down just a little bit, and now I've got a damn good exposure of the bird, we'll now go and crop this, well, we'll straighten it, okay, and we'll just bring it over there to make it a little bit more balanced, Maybe we'll bring it in a smidge more. And, uh, oh, I've not got my crop constraints on, but well, there you go. Um, so, there we go, cropped, straightened, and we could go and titivate that exposure in, in um, Lightroom or indeed in Photoshop. Um, not that it needs much doing to it at all. Um, we could get rid of this sky if we're going to be pedantic, but for a stock shot, I just turn the exposure down a little bit more and then maybe give it a little bump of clarity uh, but take out a little tiny bit so give it a little bit of negative dehaze and then turn up the vibrance and a little bit of saturation and there we go and uh, if we load it up they can see it's as sharp as a tack and it's got no noise in it so there we go that's just a relatively quick video, I hope, that sort of explains to you why I do not use um, shutter priority or aperture priority auto exposure modes when I'm doing birds in flight with a long lens. Okay, so I hope that's been useful to you guys. As ever, thanks to you for watching. and um, Thanks to all those of you who are subscribers to my YouTube channel. If you like what you've seen and you're not a subscriber, go click the subscribe button. Click the little ringety tingety bell to get a notification the next time I put a video up. And uh, I've just got to thank all my guys, all my members over on my Patreon page who contribute a little bit of money to me every month so I can continue to put up this free content for you. And hopefully one or two of you will get a guilty conscience and you too will go and sign up to my Patreon channel. Okay, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay guys um hope that's been useful for you hope that's given you a bit of food for thought for uh, um your photography for 2019 if you're into your long lens wildlife and sports action photography that is and uh, until the next time i shall see you soon Tooroo.